Good afternoon. Greetings from Dr. Rasiksha, Senior Full-Time Pediatric Surgeon at SRCC Children's Hospital managed by Narayan Health. Today we will discuss in short about surgical causes of jaundice in a children and newborns. So let me take you to the normal anatomy of the liver and bile duct. So that is a liver. From the liver the bile ducts will come and join the small bowel. So there is a left bile duct, right bile duct, then cystic duct will join. So it will form common hepatic duct, common bile duct which will join the pancreatic duct and open in the duodenum. So if there is any problem, any kind of obstruction in that area, it will give rise to jaundice which is surgical what we will call or obstructive jaundice. Now in a newborn and an older child, the five common causes of jaundice includes biliary atresia, colloidal cyst, perforation of common bile duct, sludge in the common bile duct, and last is the external compression of the bile duct. Of this, the commonest cause is biliary atresia. Now what is biliary atresia? As I told you about the normal bile duct, in biliary atresia, the extrahepatic bile duct as well as in some patient intrahepatic bile ducts becomes atretic. So if we see this, this is a classical view where the bile ducts extrahepatic, intrahepatic, gallbladder, they have all become sort of atretic or very small. And because of that, the bile which is formed in the liver is not able to go into the duodenum and because of which they will develop jaundice because bile does not come into the small bowel. They have clay colored stool and dark urine. So this is the classical features of biliary atresia. Now once the jaundice is there for more than 10 to 12 days, the, the treating physician as well as the people, the family should start thinking whether there is any problem with my child and they should get in touch with the physician. Now if it is obstructive jaundice, it will be confirmed by doing blood test. On blood test, there will be bilirubin level which will be high and of that the direct bilirubin will be high and one of the commonest cause of direct bilirubin being high is biliary atresia. However, there are many other causes we will not go into that but what we do next is do sonography. On sonography if the com uh, gallbladder is atretic it will more or less confirm the diagnosis of biliary atresia though it is not 100%. So on sonography contracted uh, uh, gallbladder and if we do HIDA scan there will be no excretion of radionuclide in the small bowel. The most important investigation is operative cholangiogram. So if when we suspect the possibility of biliary atresia the final confirmation of diagnosis is on surgery. On surgery what we will do? First is we will do laparoscopy. On laparoscopy we will see how is the liver, how is the gallbladder. Now if gallbladder is normal then we will go ahead and do operative cholangiogram. Now if gallbladder is atretic and on operative cholangiogram if bile ducts are not present, not seen that will confirm the diagnosis of biliary atresia. And if it is biliary atresia, we will go ahead and do exploratory laparotomy. Along with that, we will do portoenterostomy. We will excise all this atretic duct and join the porta, portal plate where the bile duct should be there. We will join that with the small bowel. So we will do surgery something like this. So porta is sutured with the small bowel, a rua y loop that is what we will call it is the bowel loop disconnected here, brought here and sutured. So the bile will go from directly from liver into the small bowel. The results of surgery are good if we do surgery before 6 weeks of life. 
so my request to the family as well as to the treating physician to refer a child having jaundice as early as possible to pediatric surgeon now once they come to us we do minimum investigation which is required and go ahead with surgery now if the bile ducts are not patent and if the bile is not excreted after surgery then they may need liver transplant if we do early surgery we can delay the transplant or in some of the child we can avoid doing the transplant so all these surgeries can be done easily at SRCC Children's Hospital. Now the second cause of obstructive jaundice, the common cause of obstructive jaundice or surgical cause of uh, jaundice in children is choledopical cyst. Now as I told you the first condition was the duct became narrow and atretic. In choledopical cyst the duct becomes large or cystic. Then because it is large and cystic, the bile does not go easily into the small bowel. So there is a dilatation of the common bile duct. There are many different types of dilatation. We will not go into the details of that. But the commonest variety is the, the common bile duct becomes dilated and cystic. And the presentation is same like biliary atresia they can present with infection in the bile duct and in the liver what we call is a cholangitis so they will have fever with chills and rigor they will have pain in the upper abdomen they will have jaundice clay color stool and dark urine so once they come with this we suspect the diagnosis of choledocal cyst and it is confirmed by doing sonography and mrcp and along with that we will do blood test for the infection which includes WBC count, blood culture as well as uh, CRP levels and then on that we will have bilirubin level, the direct bilirubin level will be high. Once, once the diagnosis is confirmed, the infection is controlled with antibiotics and after the control of infection we will go ahead and do surgery. On surgery, we do it today laparoscopically and we excise the dilated duct or choledocal cyst and do anastomosis of common hepatic duct with the bowel. Either you can do with the duodenum or you can do rua y loop with the uh, small bowel. So something like this is the surgery done where the common, bile, common hepatic duct is joined with the bowel through a while loop or you can suture directly the duodenum. There are some problems which can happen after the surgery like bile leak, anastomotic leak, stricture at the site of anastomosis, duodenogastric reflux and the cancer in the stomach or esophagus or in the remnant of common bile duct. So after the surgery the, we need to keep the child on surveillance to detect any of this complication early. Apart from this, we have three other relatively not very common causes which includes perforation of common bile duct. Usually this child will present with biliary ascites and diagnosis is confirmed once you have biliary ascites, we have to do exploration and then in that we will find a leak and we will uh, control that by suturing that area. The fourth is sludge uh, in the common bile duct. Now this patient will present like biliary atresia and when we do operative cholangiogram, the sludge will be washed off and we can do see the normal tree. And if I see the normal tree on operative cholangiogram, obviously they don't need any more surgery. It can be because of other causes also like neonatal hepatitis where the surgery is not required. And the last cause is the external compression of the bile duct and during the surgery if we see that we relieve the obstruction and this child should do well. My message to all of you, the community as well as the family physician is that if any newborn has a jaundice, jaundice which goes beyond 10 to 15 days please refer to pediatric surgeon if it is suggestive of biliary atresia 
by doing early surgery we can have good results we can avoid liver transplant forever or at least delay it thank you very much